Thomas Jordan, the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, recently made an announcement that should have sent shivers down the spines of all Californians. The San Andreas Fault appears to be in a critical state, and as such, a huge earthquake is approaching. The reiteration of the seismic hazard to California residents will come as no surprise. But what is new is the warning that the southern portion of the fault seems like it's locked, loaded, and set to go. Will the San Andreas Fault split California? Why is this renowned seismologist making such disturbing statements? There hasn't been a major release of tension in the southern portion of San Andreas Fault system since 1857. To put it simply, the San Andreas is one of the numerous fault systems that approximately mark the boundary between the North American and Pacific tectonic plates. Both plates are moving roughly northward, but because the Pacific plate is moving more quickly than the North American plate, there is a steady buildup of tension between the two plates. Some of these strains were tragically released in the San Francisco Bay Area in 1906 during a 7.8 magnitude quake and once more in Northern California in 1989 with a 6.9 magnitude Loma Prieta earthquake. The 1994 Northridge earthquake was linked to a nearby but distant fault system, so events of this size haven't occurred along the San Andreas Fault in the southern part of the state. This raises the possibility that one is imminent, and given the potential amount of stress that is accumulated, when it does, it will be the big one. How huge could this earthquake possibly be? And could it possibly cause the kind of devastation depicted in the movie San Andreas? In short, the answer to these questions will please Californians. In this film, the San Andreas Fault causes a 9.0 magnitude earthquake. While not unheard of on a global scale, earthquakes of this magnitude are often confined to areas where subduction occurs, such as Chile and Japan. California has a unique tectonic scenario. Two plates are slipping past each other here. So, according to recent predictions, the maximum earthquake magnitude along the San Andreas Fault System is limited to 8.0 though it's estimated that there is a 7% chance that such an event will occur in Southern California within the next 30 years. In contrast, there is a 75% chance that an event of magnitude 7.0 will occur during that time. The energy that such events would unleash varies greatly, with a magnitude 9.0 event releasing 32 times more energy than an event with a magnitude of 8.0 and 1,000 times more energy than an event with a magnitude of 7.0. However, the damage is unavoidable, whether the earthquake is a 7.0 or an 8.0. But the entire chain of events portrayed in the movie is unrealistic. For instance, the San Andreas Fault is not located beneath the ocean. Therefore, any movement along it would not be able to significantly move the water to the point where a tsunami would be triggered. Because the plates are sliding with one another and not away from one another, the opening of the vast chasm is also an illusion. Realistically speaking, a lot of destruction is probably going to happen. There's no way to make a building 100% secure, despite California's strict building rules, which urge the fitting of seismic protective systems to older buildings and forbid the construction of new buildings close to recognized fault lines. The good news is that the San Andreas film is entirely fictitious. With the same sort of hype we've come to expect from directors who, oddly enough, are also based in Southern California and have a morbid fascination with the movie. Even though these stories might be filmed anywhere, California is virtually always the setting. There's a considerable chance that the San Andreas Fault will cause a major earthquake in the not-too-distant future. If it happens, it will result in a dilemma. The devastating wreckage in Southern California will have far-reaching consequences. On the other hand, People in California are used to coping with natural disasters of this magnitude. The state's physical structures have recently been built with earthquake protection, sort of like getting used to change situations. But instead of waiting, it's the full fury of the continent's plate tectonics. Various sources demonstrated the mounting strain on Americans. The Pacific tectonic plates will almost certainly result in an earthquake with seismic consequences. The San Andreas Fault was responsible for deadly earthquakes until the study decided that the damage from such an earthquake would be, frankly, much of the only good thing. The U.S. Geological Survey modeled a 7.8 magnitude event with slippage of 2 to 7 meters to represent the pressure that had built up in the region since the last significant event to better understand the implications of a big southern San Andreas earthquake. The model revealed that the structures crossing the fault will sustain the most severe damage. Fortunately, such buildings are rare because of the 1972 Aliquis Priolo Earthquake Fault Zoning Act. 
However, the 966 roads, 90 fiber optic cables, 39 gas pipes, and 141 power lines that span the fault zone would be impacted by this slippage. Building damage cost an estimated $33 billion, with modern structures surviving unharmed, but older structures being more vulnerable. Gas mains and water pipes would be cut, causing fires to blaze, just as they did after the Northridge earthquake. It's predicted that the damage from the subsequent fires is more expensive than the damage from the original shaking. The total death toll is believed to be 1,800. And just when you think things can't get much worse, the major event will have dis destabilized the region's tectonics to the point where a chain of potentially strong aftershocks will follow. Remember the July 4th, 2019 Ridgecrest earthquake? It was a foreshock, and a stronger earthquake struck the following day. If the big one on the San Andreas Fault is the primary shock, powerful aftershocks may be followed at any time that increase the death toll, the number of injured, and the amount of property damage. The shakeout scenario postulates that those who live in the most severely shaken areas may still be without water, sewage, power, or gas service for a day or two following the shaking. There would be many people camping outside in locations that experience substantial devastation. Rescue efforts from damaged structures could last three or more days. It can take that long or more to put out a fire. Hospitals may be overburdened, lacking resources, and dealing with their losses. Some quake-damaged highways and bridges can still be closed a month later. Most people's utilities will likely be back on, and the interstate roads are expected to be reopened, though it may be necessary to boil the tap water. For many people, returning to normalcy would take up to six months. Is it possible to prevent damage and loss? Even though people can't stop earthquakes from occurring, they may learn to deal with the issues they pose. There are now three main lines of defense against earthquake threats. Buildings in seismically active regions should be built with earthquake resistance in mind. Building regulations considering earthquake shaking have advanced recently and serve as the first line of protection. Programs to reinforce or demolish older structures, most susceptible to collapse after earthquakes, are currently underway in various cities. The second line of defense is the judicious use of land to lessen the consequence of hazardous terrain. For instance, high occupancy or crucial constructions shouldn't be situated close to the San Andreas Fault or in a landslide-prone regions. Accurately predicting earthquakes will serve as the third line of protection. When such foresight is available, it will prompt evacuation of the most dangerous structures. After the Earthquake Hazards Reduction Act of 1977 was passed, a significant program was started that is being carried out by the U.S. Geological Survey, other federal agencies, universities, and private groups to learn how to predict earthquakes, assess their hazards, and reduce them. It might be possible to strengthen the Los Angeles aqueduct so it won't collapse if the San Andreas Fault ruptures. To guarantee that people can communicate, power, telecommunications, and internet system might be improved or equipped with backup solutions. The idea would increase the city's capacity to withstand a catastrophic earthquake, but it would cost billions of dollars, take decades to implement, and face other challenges. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. What do you guys think you would do in such a situation? Let us know through the comment section below. Subscribe to our channel for more interesting and informative videos. Also, make sure to like and share the video. We'll catch you up with the next one. Till then, see ya.